Pokemon Go in 2016 was a very different game than it is today in 2022. And today we'll be looking back and comparing some key features between the two years to see how far the game has come. All while hunting some extremely nostalgic 2016 spawns during a current event right now, but we gotta do it in Santa Monica, of course. Starting off with probably one of the most noticeable things and differences between 2016 and now, the spawns. I guess the most noticeable thing is how the game looks. But we're gonna check out the individual interfaces and whatnot from 2016 to today. But in the wild, there are so many more Pokemon and more variety of Pokemon to catch today. Also, I know that it's a little bit windy and the mic is non-existent on my camera. Don't worry, I'm getting that fixed. <laughs> I have a new mic coming in today. No, this is good for now. Okay. As you can see the spawns in Pokemon Go, I mean, we have all generations between Gen 1 and Gen 7. We have slacking spawning in the wild. Back in the day, it was only Generation 1 Pokemon. That's it, 2016, just Generation 1, which is cool right now during the event because there's a lot of fun Generation 1 Pokemon spawning in the wild. Jesus Christ. Obviously, back in the day, there was only Generation spawns because that's all that existed. But the thing about back in the day is a spawn like Pikachu or Charmander was considered a really rare spawn. Whereas today, during the event, we have this spawning everywhere. Also, we have cool things like Dragonite spawning in the wild right now. Back in the day, we have the videos. There were stampedes <laughs> for Dragonite, wild Dragonites and wild Gyarados. I mean, it was crazy back in the day. Oh my God, there it is. Found the second Dragonite of the night. CP oh, question marks, you catch your yet? No, mark. no, 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 no. I only have Pokeballs. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no. Apparently Santa Monica is the busiest place in the freaking loudest place in the world today. Oh, speaking of, look at this. It, it all works out for a reason. Wild Dragonite, dude. This is so cool. Spawning pretty commonly as a part of the event today. But again, man, back in the day, back in 2016, for a Dragonite to spawn, it was a uh, it was a moment to cherish. It was a thing to sprint for. You got out of your car or whatever you were doing and you ran for it. And that was like just how the game was back then because Dragonite was one of the rarest Pokemon and one of the best Pokemon in the game in 2016 because no other generation existed. And this was pretty much the top of the top. So we have amazing videos from back in the day looking <laughs> at the, uh, the sprinting for wild Dragonites, but it's so cool to have got one today. Also, the spawns keep just glitching out for me. What is happening? And another thing that didn't exist and a big reason why we ran for Pokemon like Dragonite is because back in 2016, shinies didn't exist. There are so many great shinies to catch in the wild during this event and in raids, which we'll talk about in a second. And looking on the nearby, oh my God, what is happening? Did you see that? What is, what is happening to Oh, shinies didn't exist in 2016. It was just rare spawns. So if you found a rare spawn, it was something worth running for. Shinies were actually not introduced until 2017 with uh, Shiny Magikarp. Maybe we can find a wild Snorlax today if the game decides to spawn Pokemon because we had some really fun wild Snorlax memories and moments back in the day chasing that thing down. Okay, so we ran like three blocks, found a Snorlax for 673. It's not high, but it's okay because it's still a Snorlax and it's still awesome and it's one o'clock in the morning. Mine ran away. You coming for the Snorlax? Snorlax? Right here, it's right here. Hell yeah! yeah! <laughs> He's juiced. <laughs> we came a long way for the Snorlax. Snorlax. Nice. That's what we got at the Snorlax. Good morning. Oh, were you guys at the wharf? Hell yeah, yeah we, wharf and cannery row we've uh, been at. Nice. Snorlax, sweet. Speaking of chasing things down, we have tracking Pokemon in 2016 was terrible. But it wasn't worse than 2022 apparently because it just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so when the game starts working, we'll talk about that. Let me find some Pokemon to track. Okay, I got the game and the tracking sort of working. But for right this second, we don't need it because tracking in 2016 was a whole different monster. There were footsteps, <laughs> these footsteps back in 2016. And basically on your nearby, there were footsteps and they showed how close you were to the certain Pokemon on your nearby. The less footsteps there were, the closer you were getting to the Pokemon. So that's how you tracked them. So if you were looking for a Growlithe and it had three footsteps, it means it was pretty far away. But then it would go to two footsteps, you'd be closer, one footstep so you're very close, and then you'd eventually hopefully find it. But you'd essentially have to walk around in circles <laughs> because the feature kind of worked uh, until you were within one footstep of the Pokemon and then hope you could find the spawn. It was really inefficient. Not as inefficient as it is right now in 2022, where the nearby isn't even loading. So, uh, at least we had footsteps back then. Now I guess we have nothing. But back in the day, you could actually select which Pokemon you wanted to track, um, and then it would just show up kind of on the bottom right, and the footsteps would show up with the outline of the Pokemon or the Pokemon itself, which is funny. Also, speaking of your nearby, which I love, I, I would I would love to show you right now, but I don't know why the game is literally broken when this is the only time I need the game and all its features to work. 
What the heck? Back in the day, you could not track Pokestops. Pokestops were not even in your nearby. It was a way different system, and Pokestops in your nearby didn't get introduced until, I mean, I don't know how long later, but it was years until we got a pretty, like a really, really good, robust tracking system that we have today that I would love to show you. But the, the game is broken. I guess we had a really robust, a robust tracking system that we used to have until today. Oh my god, I just realized what the issue is. So my tablet is back at home and I left Pokemon Go open because I was taking Mewtwo raids. I forgot to close Pokemon Go my tablet so I have it open on two devices. I'm getting it banned. So Reese, if you could use your screen recording of a, a, a Pokestop, but how the nearby, how the, how the tracking system works now, we all know how it works. You open your nearby, there are Pokemon on certain Pokestops, and then you can click that Pokemon, and then click track, and it will show you which Pokestop that Pokemon is close to. That system didn't exist for years. Oh my god, and speaking of shinies, look what I accidentally freaking quick caught. We got, we got a shiny ditto today, dude, no way. What was this from? I don't even know what this is from. I wish you could see what, hey, idea Pokemon Go, add what you, what the ditto transformed from into the data of it. But dude, that's so sick. Uh, I'm just quick catching. I'm like, I'm not even, like, I'm, I'm not even trying to catch Pokemon right now. Dude, shiny ditto. These didn't exist. A, ditto didn't exist in 2016. B, shiny ditto, or shinies in general, didn't exist in 2016. Also something that didn't exist in 2016, back when the game first started, is this right here. Mewtwo, obviously, but Mewtwo raids, and raids in general. Raids didn't even exist in 2016. It's kind of crazy to consider a world in Pokemon Go without this, raiding. Raiding is such a fundamental part of Pokemon Go today that without it, what did we do back then? Well, we gym battled some of us. I, I opted out of doing that because I found gym battling really boring. But back in the day, there were still gyms, and you could still battle in gyms, and that whole system was completely different from what it is today. We are at our next gym right here, which is actually going down right now. So hold on. Let me try to let me try to jump in this battle. Wait, I want to attack. I want to attack. Go. Okay, go in. All there is is an Arcanine, uh, so we're just going to try to smack him around a little bit and see what we can do. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna battle to the ability. So we're super effective, obviously, because Vaporeon versus Arcanine, Vaporeon's gonna win every single time. And he is an 1890, so he's got a lot of CP. Gym battling back then versus today, I mean, it was like, you could power a gym up, I think, to like, what, level nine or level 10? I'm pretty sure you could have up to 10 Blissies in the same gym. And today, obviously, it's very different because you can't put legendaries in gyms, but those didn't exist in 2016 either. But with gyms today, you could only have one of each species. So if you want to put a Blissey, you can have one Blissey instead of 10, and you can only have six Pokemon instead of 10. Back in the day, gyms were gyms were not fun. Gyms were fun if you were level like 40 and had like a maxed out team of Blissey, you and your homies. But you guys were bullies as well. Looking at you. <laughs> Raids though, weren't introduced in Pokemon Go until 2017. But today, obviously in 2022, we have infinite amounts of raids and they rotate every month every other week with legendaries. There's always new, every other week with raids and special events, there's always new raids happening. And then obviously today, wow, 2369, A, nice, B, that's a really good IV Mewtwo. But in raids today, during this event specifically, we have Mewtwo, we have Megas, which were definitely not around in 2016 either. Shinies, dang it. And I guess even the concept of legendaries was just something for, clickbait YouTuber scum back in the day. I feel like I did a video or two on YouTube back in 2016. Legendaries weren't introduced until GoFest 2017. So the idea of catching a Mewtwo <laughs> was like a dream in 2016 when the game first came out. That would have made for a great shiny Mewtwo. Okay, there's a couple of other key features, but we actually need to walk for them. Oh my God, we incense the Dragonite. Jesus. I don't think I've ever done this back in 2016. I know people did do this, and it was like it was like more rare than catching. Think of think of catching a shiny, freaking gibble in the wild before community day. It was like more rare than that. <laughs> this isn't technically what I was going to show this next clip, but I'm down. Got it. <laughs> That's cool. The reason why walking is needed for this next thing is because eggs were a completely different story back in 2016. Back in the day, when you looked at your egg inventory, they all looked the same. They looked like two kilometer eggs. They all had the same exact coloration and everything. The only way you could tell eggs apart from each other was how long or how many kilometers it took to hatch the eggs. And you obviously couldn't see what was inside of them. And the hatch animation itself, when the Pokemon hatched from the egg, was completely different. And also, obviously, you couldn't hatch shinies back then. Also, seven kilometer eggs and 12 kilometer eggs didn't even exist yet. But now, obviously, looking at the egg inventory, you could see 
the different coloration of the egg so we know which one's a two, five, a seven, and a 12. When you click on the egg, you can actually see, well, uh, A, a lot more data than you could previously. But what Pokemon are inside? What are the hatchable Pokemon inside of each egg? This is the pool for the 12 kilometer eggs. Checking out the sevens, are they any good right now? Absolutely not. These are the seven, I guess they're okay. <laughs> and so on and so forth. So the egg inventory system and the entire just egg hatching system is massively, <laughs> that's an understatement, massively improved since 2016. And the last really major feature that we didn't have in 2016 that we have today is field research, which is super duper underrated in Pokemon Go. If you grind field research, there's so many awesome things. Oh my God, there's a lot you could get from this. For example, you could get a slacking, oh my God, or a yeah, Venusaur! Back in the day in Pokemon Go, there were wild Venusaurs in 2016. It was extremely rare, again, probably just more rare than a shiny Pokemon is today. Way more rare than a shiny Pokemon is today. I have a very funny memory from back in the day when uh, me and my friends were all driving around together. My friend was driving, he wasn't playing, and we, everyone else in the car was playing Pokemon Go, and we found a wild Venusaur. We were driving around Hayward looking for Pokemon at 2.30 in the morning, and my phone buzzed, and I looked down, and I saw it, and I'm like, what the hell is- Oh my god, it's a Venusaur! So we stopped on the side of the road, we pulled over, and every single person in the car, they all have like 1 to 200 CP Venusaurs, and then mine was a 1300, so obviously there's like a big difference between CP. Um, but we all pulled over, and everybody caught it, and I was sitting here now with this video, obviously I, I had to speed up, because this is a 7 minute clip of me throwing over 30 raspberries and 30 Ultra Balls at this damn Venusaur, and then at the end you'll see he, uh, he was not having it, but it literally, it took me forever. I was sitting there just like, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. And then at the end, I almost smashed the window with my phone. But it's safe to say I didn't catch it. It actually fled. It, ra it ran away. So it, <laughs> that was a very tragic, one of my more tragic moments in Pokemon Go. And this should also be Venus or Charizard Blastoise. Shiny. Dang it. Wild Blastoise is a Pokemon that we found actually quite a bit here at the Santa Monica Pier in 2016, back when there would be m literal mobs of people running around trying to find the rare spawns like Blastoise. Even a war turtle in the wild was something that you kind of ran for. So really, really interesting to see how the game has changed to where today you could just catch 25 Pokemon super duper easily. And then from the field research, get a Blastoise catch, which is unthinkable in 2016. Also unthinkable in 2016? Catching a shiny Mewtwo. Play the clip. Speaking of Mewtwo, we gotta get a shiny now. Ah, 2915. Shiny weather boosted Mewtwo. What did I say? We gotta get a shiny now. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, shiny number one on the board for the day today. Looking freaking good. Okay, do you notice anything different? Anything uh, audibly better? I finally got a new mic, so we have a lot of videos coming up. We have a lot of travel coming up. There will be no cracky mic, no absolutely bad wind quality. We are so set for the next couple of weeks and months. I am so excited. But that is, my friends, the difference between 2016 Pokemon Go and 2022 Pokemon Go. The game's come a long way. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and check out the other videos on screen. See you in there. Take care.